Reggie, uh, Azeem Victor, your six-round pick, do you see him being more of an inside linebacker, outside linebacker? Or is he going to affect the special teams quite a bit? Just yeah, he'll, he'll definitely be a special teams player. That's where you're going to have to make his mark, but we'll let him compete at inside linebacker. Let's get to uh, Maurice Hurst. What's, uh, what's his status? Is it up in the air at all as far as the heart condition and, and medically? No, he's, he's good. He's, he's good to go? Yeah. So my question was, why would you, um, why do you think he was um, still there on the board at, at that point? Well, the fact is that he has a, he does have a heart condition, but it was, uh, it's a situation where he'll get checked every year, and it's, it's, but right now, uh, he's good. How high did you guys have him before this heart condition? Came I'm out? not going to tell you my board. <laughs> But we had him higher than we where we took him. <laughs> Let's put it like that. And what is it you like about about him? Well, we love the person, number one. But the one thing he can do is is work the edge of the offensive lineman, and he does a good job of uh, maneuvering uh, around that block and getting upfield. What did you uh, What did you learn about him from his visit here? And um, do you think he's going to be a good fit at that at that three technique spot? Uh, definitely, he'd be a good fit. Uh, what we learned about him was we learned about him as a person, and we got definitely got more information uh, medically, uh, which was uh, one of the main reasons we brought him in. So, um, got a lot of information that we got uh, about the person. Um, did, during that visit, did that make you more secure having? Evaluated him medically here. Did that make you more secure in yes. making the pick? Reggie, what did you guys learn about yourselves as an organization working with John and, and the new staff that's here through these past three days? It was fun. It was fun. It was uh, the one thing that this this staff has. They have uh, they have a vision. You know, they know exactly what they not only what they want, what they need, and what will help them be successful. And they communicated really well. So I thought it was really good the way the, uh, the scouts and, and coaches inter interacted, and myself and, and Groove. Scott Winter, uh, Silver and Black today. Reggie, uh, the theme today seemed like a risky business where uh, you went after a lot of uh, top talent, but a lot of uh, questionable issues you know, all throughout the, the day. Um, is that a is that a change for you? Because uh, in the past it hasn't been the case uh, going after those kind of players. Well, when you say risky business, you're talking from medical and a couple of character issues. You know, on the medical deal, uh, we're not gonna uh, unless the, our medical people flat out rejects a guy. We're not gonna flunk them. You know, if they feel like they can play uh, this year, we're going to pass them. Uh, if they're going to be well at a certain point, we're going to keep them on the board. And if it's something that's, that will uh, prevent them from playing forever, then we take them off the board. Now, as far as character, we, we're not going to condemn uh, these kids for mistakes. Um, and that's that's one thing. And we're not going to lower our standards ever, ever okay? Um, but we feel like we have uh, a great system in place uh, to help guys who have fallen. But if they're willing to stand up, own it, and, and, and get better within themselves, we're going to give them a shot. Uh, and I think we're going to hold them accountable. And I think this, uh, this staff is going to do a great job of, of holding them accountable and helping them. What do you think uh, Jihad's time here didn't work out and what went into that trade and what do you guys think you're getting in Ryan Switzer? Well, when, when they called, uh, it, it kind of opened, opened the doors, you know, and the bottom line is we drafted two interior guys and that kind of opened the door. So I was willing to listen um, and they had a player that they was willing to to let go, and, and we we want some competition as a returner, and he's a slot receiver, so it made it easy for me in that decision.
I feel like that's a good way to uh, upgrade our football team. So in case of uh, two punters going uh, in a row there, was your selection at all a reaction to the selection before you were? Or Absolutely you not. Okay. We had him. I had him target. I had that pick target for my punter. What do you like? I'm about? glad I had my punter there. <laughs> so, but that that was uh, it worked out great. What is it about Townsend that that you like? Oh, shoot, I, I I love the kid. Um, I know his little brother. His little brother was a roommate of my son at Tennessee before he transferred back to Florida to be with his brother. And um, but I know the family very well. I know what he's made of. Uh, he does a great job, directional pun. He's a great holder. Um, great little athlete. He's, he's, I think he got a lot of intangibles to be one of the best punters in the years to come. Reggie, speaking of Townsend's little brother's roommate, uh, the Chiefs' sixth round draft pick said that he was looking forward to whooping up on you and whooping up on the Raiders <laughs> for many years to come. Uh, on a personal level, I mean, what's going through your, your mind and your heart when you see Khalil get drafted? And then on the professional level as well, I mean, he's switching from Defensive tackle to offensive guard. A lot going through my mind. Still, um, I'm proud of him, and I told him that. Um, I told him. I always told him when we we take you, we gonna put you on the offensive line too. So I see what Coach Reed thought process is, um, but uh, I gotta. I got a text from Charles Woodson. He said, he told me, your son has to retire. There's no way he's going to put that red helmet on his head. <laughs> so I, part of me felt that way. But uh, in all seriousness, it's, it's a good opportunity for him. And I was hoping that he land at a spot that will uh, kind of grow him to that position. You know, he, he, he can play D tackle, but I think he could he probably could be special on the offensive line. And that's where we were going to play him. Reggie, we talk about uh, like the character of Azim Victor and you know what makes that questionable. Are there parts of his character that stood out to you in the positive that, that made up for the others? Uh, no question. I mean, we brought him in for a visit. We got to spend some time with him. We got to know him. Uh, as a guy, you know, he was at the combine. I mean, we got a lot of information. Uh, you know, we was there at his pro day. We was, you know, we, it's, and I'm not going to say information overload, but he understands his mistakes when he's willing to to transform that, and we're willing to uh, to give him a shot. And, and we're going to put a place, system in place for him and um, to help him. As long as he's committed, we're going to commit to him. What do you like about uh, Marcel Aitman? And you have a lot of depth now at receiver, a lot of guys with you having Switzer and Aitman today. How do you assess that position and where you are in terms of some of the depth guys? Well, I'll tell you what, Marcel, when we had an opportunity to get a big receiver like that, um, we jumped at it. We're going to give him a shot and, and let him compete and, and see how it goes. But, you know, even with Switzer, those guys, they can do certain things, you know, being in the slot with, with Switzer and being able to return uh, punts and, and uh, with, uh, with Marcel, getting him an opportunity to, to show the coaches what he can do. I mean, he made a lot of big plays in college, and we, we want to see if he can do that for us. What are you guys getting in Nick Nelson, your fourth rounder, once he becomes healthy from that meniscus injury? Mm -hmm. What do you say? What do we think? Uh, what do you think you're getting in him? Uh, we think we get a pretty good little corner that who can play nickel. Uh, we think we get a two for one deal there. I mean, he's a really good, uh, he's a really good football player. Uh, he knows how to play the top of routes and a lot of pass breakups. Now he's just gonna have to learn how to get some interceptions. You know. Reggie, you characterized Mo's uh, me being evaluated each year for that heart condition. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to describe his ability to compete in the NFL as a year-to-year -year basis based on the result of those evaluations? Well, no, it's just something he has to go through. 
you know, so however you want to term it, you know, it's just something that he's, you know, now that they've found out whatever this condition is, you know, I'm not going to get into all the medical terms and the, all the what else, but he's just going to have to uh, follow a certain certain deal that where he gets checked and uh, just so uh, every, everybody's on the same page and we all know everything. So, you know, when something like that happens, now to be smart is to let's keep getting checked, you know. We all go to our annual physical exams, see what kind of shape we're in. Some of you guys need to get, <laughs> get that check up a little more often. <laughs> I'm not naming names. Reggie, is there, is there any thought to maybe kind of easing him into things with this whole situation with his heart and like not go full, go right from the start? No, not at all. Um, there was a, John had talked about the uh, urgency or the quest to get that interior pass rusher. Now after this draft, you have P.J. Hall, you have Maurice Hurst, and you have some in incumbents there with Mario Edwards. How would you assess that defensive tackle spot, especially in terms of your interior pass rushers? Are you at this point satisfied with the talent that you have there and feel like that could be an improved position group? I would be more satisfied when I see our sack total rise. So uh, if that result turns into results um, for our interior to get more sacks and to help our edge rushers get more sacks, then uh, absolutely. Um, but the intent uh, will always be to get not only add depth, but competition and, and rotation. So the more you have in there, I think the better off you will be um, throughout the, uh, the game, from first quarter to when the final whistle blows. So adding some of these players during the offseason in this draft, we think we, we got better in regards to, the, to that. One more. Now that the draft is over, uh, is there still a possibility there's a spot for Navarro Bowman on this team? That's always a possibility, absolutely. We, we're not going to close doors to, to get uh, good players in this, in this building. But you know, we'll do that until the 53-man cut. 